Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered, where we dive into the world of adult entertainment and beyond. I'm Holly Randall, and each week I bring you candid interviews with the biggest names in the industry. This isn't your typical podcast. We are here to explore topics often shrouded in taboo, from uncovering the real behind the scenes action to sharing personal journeys. Nothing is off limits on this show. And did you know that for our loyal listeners, we stream every episode live on my Patreon? You can join us for exclusive live streams, bonus content, and behind the scenes peeks into my photography shoots. Your support on Patreon helps fuel this podcast, making us able to introduce even more amazing guests each week. So check us out at patreon.com slash Unfiltered. And speaking of, I want to give a shout out to my new Patreon members, BJ Jacobs, Brian Ford, and Brian Nickel. Thank you guys so much for joining and for your support. Okay, so my guest today is on a quest to sleep with 600 people by the end of the year. In case you guys didn't know, there's like 365 days in the year, so that's more than one person a day. Um, That's a lot. And maybe if she takes days off, maybe she has to do three. I don't know how the math is going to work out. We're going to find out. Uh, She's been dubbed Australia's most sexually active woman and is not letting that crown go anytime soon. Let's welcome Annie Knight. Thanks so much for having me. You're so welcome. Thank you so much for coming. You're welcome. I love the fact also that you brought your mother. Yes, I did. Who's who's in the the green room, as we call it. I think that that's super cool, especially because, like I mentioned to you earlier, Mm -hmm. I come from family that worked in the adult industry. In fact, that picture right next to you is my mom and my dad. My mom is not wearing a shirt in that, (laughs) but the dog is covering her. He's so cute. So I know that was Mr. (laughs) That was Mr. Dog. Oh, great. I I named him (laughs) when I was like three. Very original. (laughs) (laughs) So first things first, let's check in on this goal of sleeping with Mm -hmm. 600 people. It's October now. So what number are you at? I'm at 535. Oh, so you're almost there. I'm so close. I think I'm going to go like above and beyond 600. Really? You don't think you're just going to hit 600 and then like take the holidays off? No, I'm like, I've revved things up, if anything. I've like booked in all these people for the rest of the year and I'm filming every single day. Just go hard or go home. Oh, you're an overachiever. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. So are these 600 different people or are you counting repeats? No. So they're all different people. If I do sleep with the same person twice, they don't count the second time. Oh, girl. Because, you know, like they're not that you're doing a 600 person gangbang, but there was like the Houston 500, which was the a 500 person gangbang that Houston did back in the day. Wow. And, um, they weren't 500 different people. Sometimes a guy came around the second time. Oh, that's cheating. And he was counted as second. No. And then third time Mm-mm. is counted as third. I mean, it was just like 500 <laughs> different penetrations by maybe 200. I don't know actually how many people were there. Well, that fair. feels like cheating because that's that means I could just have, you know, I could sleep with one person 600 times. That's boring. That's true. Yeah. doesn't that's count. That's true. <laughs> that could be like me and my husband just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Um, so <laughs> I'm also just laughing because I t- totally broke the five minutes don't talk about I did notice that. dicks. And I just went <laughs> I went right into it. So sorry, this this episode isn't gonna be YouTube, isn't gonna be monetized. <laughs> sorry, Masha. Whoops. <laughs> oh well. Uh okay, so what kind of frequency are we working with then? So it does change because, I mean, I'm human. I'm not going to mm-hmm. be in the mood every single day. Mm. And sometimes I feel sick, you know, things happen. So, yeah. you know, some days I might film with like 10 people or sleep with 10 people and then mm. other days might be zero. So mm. I do tend to change it, but I like to keep, you know, an average of at least like three a day consistently. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I might take a day off and then the next day do five, that type of thing. Are these all only guys or do girls count too? Girls do count, but they only they're only like five percent of the Okay. Pool. Yeah. Okay. So Just because my audience prefers seeing we're working with a ninety five percent dick ratio. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. So when you sleep with ten people, mm-hmm. is that sometimes like several at one time? To like, because shooting 10 scenes in a day is a lot. It is a lot. Yeah. So sometimes it might be two people at the same time, three people, you know, I've done like 16 at one time. Um, 
but generally it is one at a time for the most part. When I do like five in a day, it's definitely just one after the other type thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And then how do you handle, like, does your, do you get tired? Do you get sore? Like, how do you manage that? I don't tend to get too sore because I mean, like, it's not like I'm working with Dread. Like, yes, exactly. (laughs) Every day. (laughs) Working with dread every day. So it's not super hectic. And the scenes aren't super long. They tend to be, you know, five to ten minutes. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I'm filming 20-minute scenes Mm. five times a day. I think I'd be pretty sore after that. Yeah. Uh, So, no, I mean, sometimes occasionally I'll get a little bit more sore if if I film with a guy that's a little bit bigger. Yeah. Um, I do get tired. Yeah. But I just have to push through. I've got a goal and I want to reach yeah, it. Yeah, you do. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know. Sometimes could you just like be a starfish and let the guy do all the work? <laughs> I try like not to do that because get... I want to give them a good experience. Right, I want them to right. walk away going, I loved that. I would recommend her to someone else, you know? So these five to 10 minute scenes, I got to assume that you're not working with professionals most of the time. No, it's all like POV, handheld. Mm-hmm. Um, they're all just, you know, regular guys that you see on the street type thing. Right. Yeah. Now, what if you do a scene with a guy and he is not able to perform? Does that count? Um, Does it depend on whether or not there's penetration? Like, yeah. what if he only gets in like one pump? Does that count? That's fine. That counts. Oh, okay. Uh, and that has happened before. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that counts. He finished. You know, he, did. he penetrated and finished. <laughs> so it counts. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sometimes the job is over sooner than you you think it is. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then I know that since you're releasing this, I assume, on your personal content platforms mm-hmm. like OnlyFans and stuff like that, yep. you probably have model releases yes. on all that's that. We're, that's a lot. Like the paper, I, as a producer, mm. I think about the paperwork yeah. and I think about the logistics. It's a lot of admin. Yeah. So... I tend to, I've, I've actually recently started doing the consent forms prior to filming, mm-hmm. as in like weeks before. If I'm filming with someone, then I'll send it to them. They have to like fill it out before they show Yes, up. because I have had a few times where the consent form's been rejected and it turns out that the man has lied to me. Like he's been on OnlyFans before and has been um, like banned from OnlyFans. Uh. So then when I've uploaded their consent form and filmed with them, it's been rejected and then I can't sell the content. So it's like kind of a waste of time. Yeah. And that sucks. So yeah. Yeah. But it is, it's so much admin. Yeah. Like I'm drowning. <laughs> that's what that's what people don't think about. <gasps> no. Yeah. They don't get it. It's like people think like you're drowning in cum. No, no. you're drowning in paperwork. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> So how are the experiences overall? Like, are they enjoyable? Are, I'm sure it's a mixed bag, but majority wise, like, what would you say the scenes are like? They're really good. I mean, every experience is different, like so different. There's no two experiences that I can compare or are mm-hmm. the same. And that's what's fun about it. You know, mm-hmm. I think every everyone has a different size dig. Everyone comes at a different time. Everyone has different techniques and that's fun. But obviously, you know, there's been some not so great performances and then mm-hmm. there's been some really great performances um the bad ones are mostly like poor rhythm like mm. I feel like having good rhythm is like super important yep and just sometimes and I totally get it they'll be just too nervous and yeah. that just translate translates on camera you can really see it mm-hmm. and I get it you know that they're just sleeping with someone they've just met and they're a porn star yeah it's nerve-wracking <laughs> yeah yeah no absolutely so how do you vet these guys like how do you find them So initially it was more like I would be on dating apps looking for them or I would meet them out. And then once people sort of started recognizing me when I went out, it became a lot easier because they'd come up to me and be like, hey, are you keen to shoot some content or can I be one of your 600? And then I'd be like, yep, sure. Like consent forms done. Let's go. It's gotten harder because, I mean, there are only so many people in Australia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I do feel like I've somehow gotten through quite a lot of them. <laughs> so <laughs> recently I decided to open an application form and it's basically just asking them a bunch of questions and I put it in my link on my Instagram so anyone can apply. And then I go through the applications and I kind of narrow it down. I look at the location, whether they're willing to get, you know, tested beforehand, if they're willing to have it filmed. Um and then they send through like a photo of themselves. I'm like, oh, he's he's cute. Like, let's film with him. Okay, so you are vetting them in terms of like how attractive you find them. Um, yes, I I guess so. Yeah, but I'm not like I'm not being super picky. Yeah, you can't I'm, be with six hundred. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're just like <laughs> they're not maybe, like supermodels, all of them. Right, 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 right. You just maybe <laughs> like eliminating the yeah the ones that come across like I get, I get a bad vibe from mm-hmm. you know yeah 
Do you have an age range that you stick to or is it like pretty much, I mean, obviously over the age of 18? Oh, yeah, of course. But other than that, no, I'm open to anyone. Yeah. Recently I've been um, with some like 50 plus year olds. Okay. What's fun. the oldest guy you've been with? I, I think 56 is the oldest. It's not that old. Yeah, I know. I feel 56 like 56 really older. isn't old at like, all. Where are all my older men? Yeah. Serious demographic missing here. I know. <laughs> Seriously. Come on, guys. Come on, yeah. old guys. Come on. Get your wrinkled ass over here. Exactly. <laughs> take a Viagra, you'll be right. <laughs> <laughs> no, take a blue chew and use code Holly for 20 <laughs> for, for your first month for free. Bluechew.com. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So obviously we believe that you're going to reach your goal. Mm -hmm. Um, what are you going to do in 2025? I have been thinking a lot about this. I haven't set anything in concrete, but I have a few ideas. I obviously want to up the ante. I can't mm -hmm. just do 600 again. What if you were celibate for a year? Oh my God, that would be crazy. Nobody would buy that. No. You wouldn't make any money. No, exactly. <laughs> I can't be doing that. <laughs> the minute I said that, I was like, that's a terrible idea, no. Holly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. I mean... I don't know what I'm going to do, but I was thinking about a thousand and I'm like, oh, is that enough of a jump? Maybe I should try and do something new. I don't know, but we'll see. I've got a few ideas cooking. Hmm. Okay. It sounds like they're going to be under wraps until you've made your decision. Yeah. So I'm not going to pry any mm -hmm. further. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. So let's take it back to the beginning before mm -hmm. the 600. Um, what made you start like an OnlyFans to begin with? How did you get into sex work? Okay. So... You know, I was actually super innocent. Like I'd only, I think. Always starts that way. <laughs> my body count was like maybe six when I first started my OnlyFans. I was working in a regular job as a marketing coordinator, earning about 40,000 USD a year. And I wanted to save for a house and, you know, houses are expensive and it was impossible. I was saving no money. And I just thought, what happens if I was to open an OnlyFans and just had like a little bit of a, a side hustle. And I, all that money that I make just goes into saving for a house. And I'd seen girls on my TikTok page, you know, who looked kind of like me and they were making, you know, $40,000 a month or whatever. And I thought if they can do that, I can do that too. So I started it and it did pretty well. It wasn't like super amazing or anything like that. And I had it for about six months or maybe it was like about a year actually. And then it was just sort of like, on the down low. And I kept thinking, oh, what if my work finds out? What yeah, if, you know, I was like so anxious about that. And how did you promote it then? If you, did you have like a social media account that wasn't attached to like your real name that nobody that you knew would see it? No. So I didn't have anything like that. I had a TikTok that was under my name, uh -huh. but because TikTok was super new at that point, at least in Australia, not heaps of people were on it. So okay. I was getting subscribers and stuff, but no one from my work had seen the TikToks because right. they weren't really on TikTok. Right. Um, and then obviously, you know, TikTok really took off in like 2021 or, you mm -hmm. know, after COVID. And sure enough, eventually it sort of came came out and my work found, found out about it and I got fired. And um, after that, I was like, right, I can either go back into another job that I hate that I'm miserable in and earn, you know, basically no money. Or I can put 110% into my OnlyFans and film heaps of content and earn a ton of money and be happy. Yeah. And I went down that avenue. So when they fired you, like, what was the reason that they gave you? So they gave me like five reasons. The first one, so early in the day, they sent me an email, which I did find a little bit suspicious because they asked me if I had any side hustles or like side businesses. And I was like, mm, no, like I don't. And so in their email, when they terminated me. They said, oh, you lied to us about not having a side business. We know So that was the reason, number one. You have um, pornographic and explicit content on a website and crude language. And I don't know, there were a couple of other reasons, but basically it was that I was doing, you know, sex work and, and porn and that I was the face of their company, even though I worked in an office at the back where no one saw me. That wasn't okay. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I always wonder like what the reasoning that people give is mm -hmm. because a lot of times to me, it feels like unfair because it, it doesn't mean that you can't do your job. Oh, but yeah. I guess that whole like you're not representing the company in a way that we want. Yeah. Is... Well, the other thing is I probably could have like taken it to court for unfair dismissal, but also because they'd screenshot my content and sent it to me and that's not allowed. So I could have probably done something about it, but I just thought 
you know what? I why? don't care. Why? Yeah. Why bother? I don't were want you, this job. Were you like a little bit relieved when that happened? I was so relieved. Yeah. I was day five of this job. I forgot to mention that. So I just started a new job and I was oh. on day five of the job. And they said they'd ran all the like the background checks and everything. So I don't know how they missed that I had an OnlyFans because by that point I wasn't really hiding it that much. Yeah. And um, yeah, they yeah they they did the background checks and everything, and then I don't know. They it's like they didn't they didn't find it, and then on the fifth day I got the email, and I actually went home sick that day because I have endometriosis. Mm-hmm. And when I got back, that's when I got the email. Um, but yeah, it was it was really unexpected. <laughs> mm. But I was super relieved because um, I hated the job and I'd like called my friend the day before and I was like, I hate this job. I'm so miserable. Like I really want to leave. So when I did get um, fired, I was like, oh, it's a sign from the universe that I'm meant to do OnlyFans full time. So then your dad found out about your career in like the worst way possible. Can you tell us about oh that? God, yeah. So somehow I think I was like always scared to tell my dad about everything like and my work and stuff because... Mm-hmm you know, I'm like daddy's little girl and I just didn't want it to ruin our relationship and I didn't know how he was going to react. And so I never told him. And then October just of last year, so after doing OnlyFans for like three years, mm-hmm. all the media was sort of coming out about my my challenge and all of that. And the Daily Mail rocked up at my dad's house and he lives, you know, an hour out of the Melbourne, my, the city that I come from. And they drove all the way out there. They knocked on his door and they said, what do you think about your sex maniac daughter and her challenge to get railed by 600 people? Oh, my God. That sounds like something the Daily Mail would do. (laughs) Yep. They are the worst. They actually took photos of him. They paparazzied him while he was going to the shops as well. So they have these photos of him, poor guy, on the internet everywhere. Oh, my God. And my dad called me and it was like 7 a.m. And I just had this sinking feeling. I I knew that it was going to be something like this. Yeah. And he goes, why why did the Daily Mail just come to my door and say that my daughter's a sex maniac? I told them to fuck off. (laughs) And I was like, oh, my God, Dad, sit down. Let me just explain to you. And so I did. And he was honestly so cool. By the end, he was like, is it true that you're earning that much money? And I was like, (laughs) yeah. And he's like, Okay, I'd probably do it too if I was there. <laughs> I know, too bad you're a guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't have the same opportunities. Yep. That's great though. I know. So well, in the end, it all worked out okay. And now I'm super open with him about it. But yeah. oh my God, I just felt so bad that it happened in that way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, now, what about your mom who you brought here today? Did you tell her from the start or? No, similar situation. I'm a procrastinator. And like when I'm anxious about something, I tend to just put it off, put it off, put it off. You're not procrastinating on your... 600 no, in no, 2024, that. that's for sure. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it was early. It was it was probably only three months into me doing OnlyFans full-time after okay. I'd been fired. But mum was scrolling on Facebook and she saw um, we have Channel 7 News in Australia and she saw a news article from then talking about how I'd been fired for doing OnlyFans. So that's sort of how she found out. Mm. And then, you know, she wasn't upset about me doing – only fan, she was upset that I didn't tell her about it and that she had to find out through, yeah. you know, Facebook, which yeah. obviously understood. And, you know, she took sort of a couple of weeks to just process it. And then she was like, what about stalkers? What about this, that? Like had some fair questions. Yeah. And I just said, you know, I had an answer for everything. And I said, I thought about it really thoroughly and it's what I want to do. Now mm-hmm. she's like my biggest supporter. Yeah. yeah. I, I know. It's amazing. <laughs> um, what about stalkers? Have you ever had any issues with that? Have you ever had like a guy that like wouldn't leave after you did a scene with him? No, not in person. I have a few like online, you know, like just won't stop sort of messaging me type thing. Mm-hmm. But um, nothing in person, thank God. Touch wood. <laughs> okay. That's good. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick uh, commercial break and then we will come back. So stick around. See you in a minute. Hey, everyone. It's your host, Holly, back with another quick break to talk about something that can seriously up your game in the bedroom. You know I'm all about confidence and performance, both on set and off. So let's get into it. Blue Chew, of course. Blue Chew is a unique service that delivers chewable tablets with the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis straight to your door. No awkward conversations, no waiting in line, just effective results when you need them. And trust me, these little chewables work fast. Whether you're dealing with occasional performance anxiety or just want to make sure that things go well, Blue Chew has you covered. It's all done online so you don't have to worry about any uncomfortable face-to-face interactions. Just sign up, consult with a licensed medical provider, and boom, your prescription arrives in discreet packaging straight to your door. 
And because you're one of my fabulous listeners, Blue Chew has a special offer for you. Try Blue Chew for free. Head over to bluechew.com and use promo code Holly at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code Holly to receive your first month for free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. Don't let anything hold you back from the confidence and performance that you deserve. Give Blue Chew a try today and feel the difference. Your partner will. Hello, everybody. We are back. Okay, so Annie, so obviously you're doing a lot of stuff for your personal content platforms. Do you film for any mainstream studios or do you have any interest in doing so? No, honestly, like I really am enjoying just doing, you know, I'm sort of like the girl next door. And so I like doing that kind of content where it's like very natural and very real. And I think my subscribers like it too, because they watch it and they can almost feel like they're involved themselves because it's, like I said, mostly POV. So they, and it's very like amateur porn and usually filmed on an iPhone, but you know, they love it. And I I love doing that. I, I like filming with regular people too, rather than I used to do like a lot of collabs and stuff like that with uh, OnlyFans creators. And I just found, you know, you do a collab day and it would take four hours to film. It's like I can get 10 guys done in four hours if they're just regular Mm -hmm. applicants or. Would it take four hours because the performers themselves were like kind of slow and getting ready or they were late or were they just took. Like they're used to shooting like a 40, 50 minute scene. Maybe that's what they want for their OnlyFans. And then you have to shoot it. I feel like it's mostly like they want to get, you know, TikTok TikTok content and like photos and all of that. And then somehow, you know, you look at the time and it's been two hours and then you start recording the actual video and, you know, you stop and you start so much and it's like the video needs to be 30 minutes long and it's just a whole thing. By the time you're finished, you're exhausted and you've got one video out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Not my thing. Have any of your OnlyFans subscribers turned into guys you performed with? Uh, not that I know of. Because when I meet, like, are you talking about, like, people that have partaken in my actual challenge, have they been subscribers? Mm-hmm. I mean, a few of them have been subscribers, but not, like, the type that buy content, you know? Like, they'll sub- they'll subscribe to me because they want to chat to me. Mm-hmm. And then I've ended up filming with them. But a lot of them tend to not tell me. So if they are subscribers, I don't know. (laughs) Mm. I always ask them, I'm like, oh, so do you subscribe? And they're like, oh, no, no, no. It's almost like they act like they're too good to. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, you know that they're subscribing because they want to like see their video and like see how they look. Well, I do. I do give them a copy of their video after for free. For, you know, participating. (laughs) That's that's very kind of you. (laughs) Yeah. No, you don't pay them, do you? No. No. They they do it for the privilege. Exactly. (laughs) It's not hard. It's not hard for a woman to get free dick. (laughs) Another way around, not so much. Yeah. So I want to talk about the physical effects of sleeping with 600 people in one year. How do you take care of your body to handle that kind of volume of sex? I'm actually, I'm like super into health and wellness and managing my stress levels and all of that. So, you know, I exercise, I eat well, I take really good care of my body. I you know, go get acupuncture. I get massages to relax because sometimes obviously working so much and filming so much, it can be really stressful. And as Mm -hmm. I said, with all the admin, that can be super stressful. So I definitely like to like take time out of my day to take care of myself, self-care, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, But I also live in the Gold Coast in Australia, which is a super laid back city. So it's kind of easy to just relax and do work at the same time. It's not like living in New York where it's like, go, 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 you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, but I mean, I I don't know. I have good personal hygiene as well. Obviously, sleeping with that many people, you kind of have to. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell us like specifically some of the things that you do to take care of your hygiene? I know that there's a lot of women who are interested in how to do so, you know, when they're thinking about getting into the industry. You know, there's a lot of products out there with like v- vagina cleaning products and stuff like that. I personally don't use them because they can actually mess up your pH. Mm-hmm. And I, I get worried about that. So I literally just shower and I your, your vagina cleans itself. It's a self-cleaning thing inside mm-hmm. you. So that's kind of cool. Um, obviously, I shower in between filming with people because, mm-hmm. you know, I don't want them to have like sloppy seconds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but other than that, like you don't really need to do anything else. In my opinion. Yeah. I do know that girls who do, sh- it, that's a pretty common thing to do in professional porn, mm-hmm. but they always um, pour out the liquid that's in the douche and refill it with water. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Because yep. it can absolutely give you like a yeast infection. Yes. Yeah. 
it's so interesting, right? Because I know, obviously, I've worked in the industry and filmed a lot of women having sex. And I know that everybody's body is different. Like, there's one model in particular that I'm thinking about who literally had to, like, kind of stop shooting porn, not because she didn't like it, but she kept getting, like, you know, bacterial, like, infections. Like, you, like her body just couldn't handle all of these, like, different pH levels of guys. You yes. know what I mean? Yes. And then other people can just have no problem. I do feel like I'm really lucky. The only time I've ever had yeast infections is from taking antibiotics, mm. <laughs> like never from having sex. Right. So, and I've never had a UTI, touch wood as well. Right. <laughs> have you ever had to talk to one of your uh, scene partners about their hygiene before you start? Yes. I have. And I've uh, like asked a few guys to shower beforehand. You know, it's like I've taken off their pants and I'm like, oh, I can't touch that. <laughs> Um, who doesn't do that I himself know. before he shows up to s- I know. film I, with you? Like, I that's d- crazy to me. Those types of guys that it's happened with are the type that are just so laid back and they just like, they just don't even think about it. It's like, cra- it's crazy because it is just common sense, right? Yeah. But like, they're just super laid back and they just haven't thought about it. And I'm always polite about it because I don't want to make them feel bad. But yeah. at the same time, you know, like I can't put yeah. myself at risk yeah, 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 getting yeah. an infection. How do they like handle that feedback? I try and make it really chill. I'm like, oh, would you mind just like hopping into the shower and giving, you know, your dick a good, a good clean for me? But I that's just... like after you've looked at it, right? So like <laughs> there's know. no way to be like before the scene. I know. And they be always. Be like, hey, can you take a shower? So I asked all my guys to take a shower before the scene. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. So I, I, since these guys, I have, I have started doing that, but this was back before I'd learned the tricks yeah. of the trade. Um, so yeah, it, it, they were embarrassed. <laughs> yeah. I've had to do that too. I've had to. For the most part, like, I feel like especially now, people are so much more health conscious and so much more conscious about STDs and and being careful than they were, like, 10, 15 years ago. I don't know. I would have guys show up to set with, like, a herpy on their dick, and they'd be like, oh, I cut myself shaving. I'm like, get the fuck out of here, dude. You don't shave your dick. And then I have to send them home, and it's like, (gasps) yeah, it's, like, awful to the point where at one point... I just started like inspecting them before we shot. Well, smart. And I'd be like, I got to see. Yeah. Okay, so can you just show mm-hmm. it to me? Like I'm a fucking doctor. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I found that, uh, and that's always awkward, but I found that it, it also depends on who you work with, right? Like mm-hmm. there's a, for me, it's a small pool of very professional male performers and they know. And yeah. they ha- if they have an outbreak or there's something going on, like they will just tell me and like not come. It's not worth the risk. And and they know, like, you know, they're going to be sent home anyways. Mm-hmm. And that's the difference, I think, with with, with, right. with regular guys. They don't yeah. know all this other stuff. And often when I ask them before we film, I'm like, oh, would you mind getting a test? They're kind of like, oh, really? Like, I kind of didn't think that that would be something I'd have to do. I'm like, well, yeah, like, I need to be safe. Yeah. It's my job. <laughs> yeah. And they'll be like, I'm clean. What do you mean? Yeah, exactly. Or I'm the yeah. virgin. I'm like, I don't know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's true. Yeah. Have you had any virgins? Yes, I have. How did that go? They were honestly, it was fun. They obviously, they have no experience. So like, they don't really know what they're doing, but I kind of liked it because I get to tell them, I get to give them tips for the future. And it's like, I'm one of those people that I'm really comfortable in the middle of sex, telling people what I like and what what I don't like. Mm -hmm. So it was cool to be there first because I can tell them what a girl likes and what a girl won't like. Because sometimes, you know, they can't find the the clit, for example. Yeah. It's like, well, actually, here it is. This is what you're looking for. It's kind of like an educational experience. For yeah. Them. <laughs> and like a little fun. workshop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have any of them ever come back to you and like thanked you for like teaching them about yeah. sex? And- yes. Yeah. Like, so I had this one guy. Um, uh, yeah, it was his first time. And then he messaged me like a couple of weeks later and he was like, oh, I just had sex for the second time. And I did all the things that you told me to do. And she was going crazy. Like, thank you. <laughs> did that make you feel so proud? <laughs> yes. I was like, my proud boy. I'm so proud of my boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That's so cute. I love that. Uh, have you ever had a sex injury? Have I ever? No, nothing like super bad, but I, I've had times where I've finished filming for the day and like the inside of my thighs are burning. I can barely walk from like riding. Uh, oh my God. It's like the worst. Oh, you're doing, you're doing cowgirl and reverse yeah. cowgirl. Yes. And it's like, it's been, it's like I've been at the gym for five hours. Yeah. Yeah. It's really intense. No. <laughs> That's when I head to the, get my massage done. That, that is when a like good male performer is good because a lot of times they'll hold you and they'll 
will do most of the work. I agree. And and you don't have to do as much. Even like in reverse cowgirl, they'll hold you and then they'll like fuck yes. you, right? So you don't have to do all the squats. Mm-hmm. 100%. So you also struggle with endometriosis. Has this affected your sex life or your work life? Uh, it used to. Uh, before I sort of started taking care of my body and my health. And that's sort of why I am a bit of a health freak now, because I try to manage my symptoms through, you know, eating healthy and exercising and stress management. Um, But yeah, in the past, there'd be, you know, a a week out of every month where I'd just be bedridden and I wouldn't be able to work or do anything. And I just, I hated that because I'm such a motivated, hardworking person. So I always felt like I was like lagging behind because I couldn't do anything during those periods. Um, and the pain was just like agonizing. I even had like the surgery and everything. And after that, I felt good for a couple of months and I was like, yep, like this is going to be all good now. I can work every single day, no problems. And then it came back again. And yeah, it's just about managing it, but I've gotten it to a point now where I'm fine. I, you know, I might have one day a month where I'm not feeling my best, but it's it's sort of become a little bit easier, I think, when you know the tools to use and what to do when you're having a bit of a flare up. It's a bit easier to manage. So can you also explain what it is for those who don't mm-hmm. know? Yeah. So basically when I get my period, instead of it like coming out of my vagina, it leaks back into my body. And so you get like bleeding inside your your body essentially. Um, and it just it's it's so crazy because I saw the images of mine when I had the surgery, the doctor showed me. And they're so tiny. It's like these little, they almost look like cigarette burns on your, on the outside of your uterus or wherever you have them. But they are, they just cause, causes the worst pain. Like it's indescribable. It's just horrible. And you feel, it's like, you know, every month when you get your period and you just feel sick and you feel tired, like I just can't get out of bed. And it causes the worst bloating. It's like I'm nine months pregnant. It's crazy. But, um, yeah, it's really awful. Yeah. I used to get really, really bad period pain, not endometriosis at all, but to the to the point where like I'd there'd be a day where I literally or at least like a good six hours where I was on the couch, like in tears. I even yeah. like took muscle relaxers at some point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, been there. And then uh and then I had a baby and now I don't get cramps at all. That's so crazy. I was talking <laughs> to my mom the other day about how she had kids and like all her allergies went away yeah. and she, all, everything that was wrong with her just disappeared. Yeah. It's like crazy. I just need to have a baby. Yeah, there fine. you go. It's going to solve all your <laughs> yeah. problems. Yeah. Unfortunately, then there's a person that you have to take care of for True. 18 years, but <laughs> <laughs> worth it. <Yeah. laughs> It is worth it. I love my child. Aww. But it is, uh, yeah, it is funny like that. Like mm-hmm. I, yeah, I had a, and it's weird because having a child absolutely changes like your body chemistry yeah, in so many crazy stuff. ways. Yeah. And also when you have a kid that some of their cells go back into you. So like your child actually comes, becomes like a part of you. Wow. It's like a really interesting. Oh, that's so cute. Childbirth is crazy. That. Yeah. Like ha- th- that whole thing is wild. So wild. Do you want to have kids? So badly. It's yeah. like my lifelong dream. I've like always wanted to have a family. I don't care if there's a man involved or like, obviously I, there has to be a man involved in some way. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> but like, at least the sperm. <laughs> at least the sperm. But yeah, I'm like, happy to be a single mom and raise them on my own if I have to. Like I'm not, I'm not looking for that like typical, you know, happy family. I don't really believe in that. Mm -hmm. Um, But I want kids more than anything. Like Mm -hmm. that's all I want. I mean, I will say I, so I waited. Um, I had my daughter, I was 41 when I had her. Oh, wow. Like when I gave birth to her. Yeah. Um, I was also very lucky to get pregnant in 40. That's pretty That's not so easy. That was like my mom. My mom had my sister when she was 45 or something. Oh, wow. Yeah. I just turned 46. Oh, really? There's still a chance for me. (laughs) Yeah. Number two. Um, But I will say that, yes, and absolutely, I know a lot of women that have raised kids on their own and amazing children, but, um, and it doesn't even necessarily have to be a husband or a man, but having a second person is like yeah, everything. I can imagine. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know how I could, I don't see how I could do it on my own. Like yeah. after I had a kid, I was like, how do people do this by themselves? Cause, and luckily like my husband's incredibly involved. He's a great father. Mm-hmm. Um, he's re- like, we're very, like we share the burden very equally. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, because it's, it's so much more work than you can even like describe. Yeah. Okay. You know? Yeah. Okay. Noted. Have to get someone involved. <laughs> someone. I mean, just your, your mom. Can oh, help my you. mom. Okay. Fine. Yeah. yeah anybody. Fine. <laughs> just any, you just need someone to like help okay, you share yeah, the mom burden. Mom will help. Or you just hire a really good nanny. I did think about that. You could do I that too. Like, but yeah. Yeah. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> so many. So many. I mean, but how old are you? 
I'm 27. Yeah. So you have time. Yeah. I I'm mean, like, I'm like five years. I'll start thinking about it. You know? Yeah. That's, um, that's, that's good. I'd say like thirties is a good time to like, yeah. have kids. Especially cause I've got endometriosis. I feel like I need to think about it a bit sooner. Yeah. So you said that you don't need a man. So you're not concerned that, you know, doing sex work is going to affect like your ability to date anybody or have a, a family with. Like you're pretty independent, happy on your own. I'm so happy. It's just me and my dog. I, you know, am in my house that I bought with the money I made from OnlyFans. And I'm so happy. Like I just, but at the same time, like I am open to meeting someone. I just, you know, I feel like when I meet men, they're either threatened by the fact that I earn so much money and that they, that I would be the breadwinner or they're just like drooling over me, fully obsessed with me. And I find that icky. Like yeah, 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 I don't yeah. want someone like that. I want someone who's like also independent and but also supportive of what I'm doing. And that's kind of hard to find, but I do think it's out there. So if I find it, that would be cool. Yeah. I will say that other sex workers that I've spoken to who have dated and have dated the guy that was obsessed with them and thinks they're everything, that that changes, right? right. They start off like they love the idea of dating a porn star and mm -hmm. they think it's really cool, but then like they don't like the idea. Yes. And, and they then, try and... And then they're like, I don't want you having sex with other guys. And then it, it changes. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Because they're obsessed with the idea of you. Mm -hmm. But then like when it becomes it like serious. a real relationship, then they they don't like the idea anymore. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, definitely not going for them then. What are you looking for in like your ideal guy? Like if you could have like the perfect man, what, what characteristics would you have? <sighs> so... I would say independent, like me, mm -hmm. um, intelligent, because I'm quite intelligent myself and I feel like I need to have a certain level of conversation with him. And if yeah, you and you need to respect them. Yeah. And then loyalty is a huge thing. Um, also, just being open with things. You know, like if my biggest thing is don't cheat on me. If you feel like you need to go and and get something else from someone else, have the conversation with me. I'm not not open to that. You know what I mean? I would rather you come to me and say that than go and do it behind my back. So someone that's open and has really good communication. Um, but honestly, like what I really want is like a stay at home dad. Because <laughs> mm. <laughs> I want to be the breadwinner. I want to be working. I want to be the boss bitch of the family. And I want him to support me and just look after the kids. Yeah. All right. Stay at home dads out there. <laughs> There you go. Open casting call. It's a good Maybe gig. you can be one of the 600 and then you can be the one. Exactly. <laughs> the only one. So you've gained notoriety, obviously, for being Australia's most sexually active woman. How have you handled the amount of media coverage you've gotten, which I presume has probably led to a lot of like online negativity as well? Mm -hmm. So the media coverage, I mean... It is what it is. Mm -hmm. It's good publicity, so I yeah. can't complain about it too much. Um, the hate has been kind of difficult at times. I feel like for the most part I try to not read anything. If an article comes out, I never read the comments. Mm -hmm. If, you know, someone's commenting on a video, I usually tend to not read the comments. Occasionally I accidentally slip into the comment section. <laughs> <laughs> I see a few negative things that said about myself. And for the most part, I laugh because I'm like, this person is probably some pathetic loser who is sitting in his living room with nothing better to do than hate on someone he doesn't know. Mm -hmm. But occasionally they say something that, you know, it hits that spot, like my soft spot or my mm -hmm. insecurity. And that's when I, you know, get a bit upset or I tend to overthink it. Or what soft spot would that be? Um, I feel like honestly, the worst is when people assume stuff about my personality. Mm -hmm. It's like, you don't know me at all. Like mm -hmm. they'll tell me I'm a horrible person and that I'm ruining the world and that, um, you know, they just make all these assumptions about me, oh, that I mustn't have a dad and, mm -hmm. and all of that. And that that's stuff. pretty common. It's very common. Yeah, and it's like, the, like your dad would be proud. Yeah. And like my dad actually is really proud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They don't like that. <laughs> yeah. They, no, they don't. But yeah. So it's just things like that. I feel like when they attack my personality, I get upset because I am a really kind, genuine, you know, generous person. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I don't like when people, I don't know, attack my character. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. Mm. Yeah, don't read the comments. No, don't do it. That's the best thing. To, that's my best advice. <laughs> yeah, I don't read the comments. No, most. But I also slip into them to sometimes too. You, sometimes it's hard to avoid. And then I'm just like, me. Yeah, <laughs> I could have lived. I could have lived my life and not read that. Right. 
So do you think there's a double standard for how the general public views female porn stars versus male porn stars? Like if you were a guy, would you be getting a different kind of press? Yeah, it would be different. What I will say is with the videos, type of videos I post, I have friends, male friends in the industry who post similar content. And they've spoken to me and they said, I've been doing this for three years and I've had one hate comment in the time that I've been doing it. And their videos go just as viral. And I'm like, I post a video and it gets hundreds of hate comments. Like, how is that fair? It's like when a guy goes and sleeps with a bunch of women, he's a legend, he's a champion. When a girl does it, she's a slut and a whore. And it's like, yeah, the double standards are just crazy. But I will also say that I think if a guy came out and said, oh, I'm trying to you know, fuck 600 girls in a year. They probably, and it got the amount of media attention that I've gotten, it would probably get a lot of negative attention. Yeah. Because people would be like, well, because you're a man. You're being a predator. Yes, exactly. Right. Yeah. Which is not, like, it's not fair because. Because it also plays into the doubled standard, right? It's the, and it's the, so the same thing. The woman is the victim. The woman is the weaker sex and the man is the stronger sex. Yeah. So, so it's, it's still both ways it's sexist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's it's I mean, like, if he was doing exactly what I'm doing, I'm always getting consent. Like these these men are consenting right. to sleeping with me. Right. So if the women were consenting to sleeping to this hypothetical man, then it would be the same thing. It's it's he's not a predator. Right. But, you know, of course the idea is that women we can't make our own decisions. <laughs> we don't have our own agency. Yeah. Cause we're we don't we're, we're too like, we can't make our own decisions. We're so weak. We're so weak. We don't know what we're doing. We just say yes because we want people to like us. Mm-hmm. We're just looking for love because our daddies didn't love us. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Tale as old as time. So what advice would you give to any buddy looking to get into OnlyFans, get into this industry? The first piece of advice I would say is to really think about this. You know, like there's a lot to consider here. You're not just going to be able to open a page and the subs are going to roll in and you're going to make millions of dollars. Like this job is hard. You get so much negative attention. People will hate on you. They will pick you apart. If you don't have thick skin to handle that kind of hate, then forget about it. Don't enter the industry. But you also have to have such a good work ethic to be able to make the kind of money that I'm sure, you know, the people wanting to do OnlyFans are thinking they're going to make. So don't just think, oh, I get to sit back and, you know, live my life and the money rolls in. No, you have to film all the time. You have to film like marketing stuff all the time. You have to do all the admin, the uploading, the scheduling. There's so much behind the scenes stuff involved with opening an OnlyFans page. So I would first say consider all of those things. Write down a pros and cons list as well because you might lose, you know, friends, family members, that kind of thing. If you think it's worth it, do it. If you don't, don't do it. Yeah. But um, if you've, after all that, decided you want to do it, I would say subscribe to some of your favorite bigger creators in the top, you know, 0% or whatever. See what they're doing. See how they're running their pages. Have a look at their social media. How are they promoting themselves? Um, And, yeah, just do a lot of research and come up with a plan. I think having a niche is super important. Um, you know, everyone sort of has their little niche. I think mine's kind of like girl next door. Um, but yeah, do, do your research and go from there. Yeah. I think that's a common misconception that you can just, and I hear this from people all the time who ask me, they're like, oh, you know, I, I want to make some extra money. Can I just like open an OnlyFans mm-hmm. and just, and, I, and same thing, like also because there's no internal like marketing and promotion, like in the website, yeah. that much unless you get featured on OFTV, Mm -hmm. which is a huge boom. And please put this video on OFTV. Come on, (laughs) OnlyFans. Every time you do that, I get such a big boost. Oh my God. I fucking love it. (laughs) So OFTV is like huge. I would say for anyone looking to get into OnlyFans, definitely do a safe for work video Mm -hmm. for OFTV because that will send you a fuck ton of subscribers yeah yeah that's like huge that. yeah but th- yeah it's all those little things mm-hmm. and um you're right it's not easy it's a lot of it's a lot of work and people are so surprised by that i know i think that people get into sex work because it's easy yeah and it's like i wouldn't say that it's easy i would say that you have more personal freedom yes and autonomy to run your business how you like and you have more options. Yeah. So people always say to me, oh, she's taken the easy way out. Uh, No, no, I have not. It is, as you said, it's the financial freedom and the freedom in general that you have because you're running your own business and you're in charge of your own schedule. So, you know, if you're a 
an afternoon person. You can literally sleep till 12 if you want to and go to bed at 12. Mm -hmm. As long as you're working consistently, you know, do do what you want. Yeah. So that's the best thing about it. But you still have to work. Yeah. (laughs) Ain't that the truth. And her burning thighs will tell you that as well. (laughs) Exactly. Um, Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Annie. Thank you. We have a list of questions from my Patreon members that I'm going to ask you after this wraps, if that's okay. Perfect. Yeah. And yeah, guys, don't forget that, you know, if you're a member of my Patreon, you can send in these questions and you can get my guests to answer them on camera for you. Um, For now, Annie, can you tell everybody where they can find you online? Yep. So my Instagram is Annie K Knight and my OnlyFans is Annie Kate 78. And you guys can find me on Instagram and X or Twitter at Holly Randall. Um, I already threw my Patreon link out there as well. Um, If you're watching this on YouTube, it's also available on all podcast platforms if you like to listen to podcasts while you're driving to work. And if you're listening to this, check out the video version on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. Like, subscribe, share with your friends. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I'll see you next week.